All right, now that we've talked a little bit about the pottery from ancient Greece, we are gonna be using the images that we saw, and maybe you'll have a handout like this with some different shapes to create um, some vase patterns out of thicker cardstock that look like this in different shapes and sizes. And we will trace and overlap seven of them to show the color order um, on the color wheel and how when you overlap a primary color and a secondary color, you get an intermediate color. So the materials you're going to need for this assignment are a long sheet of paper, which I've already cut for you. You're gonna need a piece of cardstock, uh, of course, a pencil and an eraser. And then later on, you'll need um, a fine point black marker, some scissors, a pencil sharpener that I'll put out at each group. And the very end, you'll be using these watercolor pencils to color in the vases. And then you will be painting over them with a little bit of water and a brush. And that's so that we can mix those, uh, the primary and secondary colors together to show the intermediate color. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is create a vase pattern. So we want them to be different shapes and sizes. So we want some to be tall and we want some to be shorter. And this one you can see has um, a handle on it. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and you also just want them to sort of be, well that's almost the same shape. This one's a little bit wider. So here we're gonna start by um, you can fold this in one of two ways. You can fold this over to make a tall, thin base like this, or you can fold it over to make a short, wider base like this. So um, in this case, I'm gonna fold it this way. Now here's, here's the beauty of it. We want it, we want your project to have different bases going across but you don't have to make a different one. You don't have to make seven different ones because you're gonna share with people in your class. So let's say you have five people at your group, then if you share vases with them, you'll have five different vases already. So you're only gonna make one. So we're gonna fold it in half. We wanna make sure the folded side is on our left so it looks like it would open like a book. And then we are going to draw half of a vase shape into the fold. So just to show you, if this is my fold, the very simplest way is to draw number three. That looks like this. So that would be half of a vase shape. But you can get really creative and do something a little bit different. You can always practice some of these. Um, and if you wanna make a handle, then you would just add the handle like this. Um, and then we would cut it out in one piece at the end. The handle makes things a little bit trickier. So if you want to keep it simple, just draw a vase shape and use that handout to sort of help you. So if you sort of draw a line down the middle here, you'll see that this vase shape, sorry, I wasn't holding my pencil right. This vase shape kind of looks like that. Okay. So use this to help you. Okay. So I'm going to draw my vase shape right into the side. So we're drawing half of the vase. Okay, and I'm not gonna draw mine with a handle. I'm gonna just leave it like this. So then once we have the vase shape and the way we like it, then we're going to keep it folded and we're going to cut it in one piece. So I'm just gonna follow my line all the way around. Cut it out as neatly as I can. Um, there we go. I'm going to cut this a little bit straighter than what I drew it. All right. So now when you open it up, you have your vase shape. This is a shorter, wider vase. So you probably cannot get seven of these going across and be way too wide. But if you mix it up with some thinner vases, then you probably can. Okay. 
So once you have a bunch of different vase shapes that you at your table, okay, and, and maybe you don't have enough at your group, you're gonna all have to sort of share with each other. Then you're gonna start with your paper. You're gonna write your name on the bottom right corner. Just your first name, please, no last name. I always write Mrs. B. So now we're gonna start overlapping. And as you can see on this one, my first vase goes off the edge and this face goes off the edge a little bit. And to give yourself enough room and not make things too crowded, I think it's a good idea to start with a vase that's sort of a little bit off of the edge. So I'm actually gonna start my first one here and I'm going to have some of it off of the paper. So I'm just gonna hold it down and push my pencil against the pattern like this, all the way around. Okay, so that's face number one. Now I'm gonna pick a different face and I'm gonna overlap it. So that means I'm not gonna put it next to it, I'm going to draw it on top. Okay, just, just so it overlaps a little bit. So I'm actually gonna draw it about here. So this is vase number two. And notice I'm keeping them pretty close together at this point because I have to fit seven, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind, you have to fit seven. And I want my vases to sort of go up and then down and then up. As you can see on my example, it sort of makes this rhythm of up and down. Speaking of rhythm, Mrs. Reese is teaching kindergarten behind me. So if you hear music, that is what that is, okay? Now I'm gonna overlap this one a little bit. This is number three. So I'm just gonna trace around very carefully. Again, some of mine have handles, but if you don't want handles, uh, if you want to keep it simple, then don't worry about that. All right, so that one was kind of tall, so now I'm going to do this one a little bit shorter. And uh, I'm actually going to flatten this one out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this one overlaps a little bit at the bottom and the top, but there's a little bit of space here, which is totally fine. So I'm going to trace this one. This one takes up quite a bit of room. But I'm doing okay because I'm in the middle on a mat number four, so I think I can fit three more. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four. All right, so let's do, I have a couple more. Let's see. All right, here's number five. I'm going back tall again. Tracing this one, making sure it overlaps a little bit. This is number five. Oops. Okay, and you wanna draw light. If you accidentally move it while you're tracing, then just put it back like a puzzle piece in the same spot and finish it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'm gonna have just enough room. If you're tracing along and you're at number three and you're way over here, you gotta rethink. This is, this is all about composition. You have to be thoughtful about where you're placing these and know what you need to have so you have enough room. And this one, I'm gonna flatten this bottom a, a little bit as well. Okay, so this one's gonna go here and it's gonna go off the page a little bit, which is perfect because then I start and end off of the page. Now this may not work out the first time for you, which is why you need to draw a light until you get it right. And then we will trace harder uh, or draw harder and trace with the marker. All right, so I'm gonna count and make sure I have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and everyone overlaps the other one just a little bit okay it looks confusing now but as you were going all you were doing was overlapping the one before it so it shouldn't shouldn't have been too confusing as you were drawing the next step will be to carefully trace with marker and color and that's where things get a little bit tricky um, before I finish this video though if you decided to draw a handle we want to actually make it look like you can put your hand through the handle. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So for example, on this one here, this is what I found. The easiest way to do that is to actually very lightly draw this curve. So it's like you're following the curve of the vase all the way down as if the handle wasn't there. And then go back and draw the handle in like this. And then you sort of darken this part so now your handle's there, and then you want to erase these lines. So now you have a finished handle. Hey, I'll show you up here as well. 
So I'm gonna follow this down as if the vase continued without the handle very lightly. Now I can trace around this. I wanna darken this up a little because that's the part I wanna keep. And then if I erase this part right here, now things get really tricky right in here because I still need this line. Okay, that's part of the other vase. So that's why I was saying sometimes the handles are a little trickier. So if you wanna keep things simple, you'll wanna draw a vase without a handle and you'll wanna trace vases without a handle. I actually have another one here that I did, it's bigger. This one has no handles, but still looks very nice and it keeps things a lot more simple. There's very simple overlapping. So you need to know what you think you're capable of doing and choose wisely. It's all about composition again. So I just need to finish going through. This one's very big, so look, I would just carefully follow like that vase line, draw in my handle. Okay, this part in the middle is the part that I wanna keep, and then I will erase this part and this part. But you see this overlapping here, I have to go and put that back. Okay, and you would continue that all the way through the end. And then a separate video uh, after I've traced everything, we will go through the coloring process.